This is going to be verse by verse of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And we're going to look at the topic of, do you think about others? How often do you think about others? 2 Corinthians 8, 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. So he says, we do you to wit. This means he just wants them to know. He, he just wants them to know about the grace of the Macedonians in their giving. So he's going to compliment them on that. Do you think about others? Do you compliment others? Or is all you do is just nag on people and criticize people? Now, we don't want to be flatterers because Proverbs 26, 28 says, A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. So, we're not flatterers, but there's nothing wrong with giving credit where it is due. And these people had the grace of giving, the Macedonians, which it was only possible because God gave them this grace. So, all the real credit goes to him, but it's refreshing to hear a Christian compliment another Christian in 2020 because most Christians just bash other Christians. So verse 1, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia, how then a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. So even though the Macedonians were in a great trial of affliction, as it says there in verse 2, and deep poverty, they still had a lot of grace, and they did it with abundance of joy. Their heart was in it, and giving to someone meant more than material things they could have. This is very Christ-like, because it says in verse 9 of Second Corinthians chapter 8, the chapter we're studying, if you sk skip down to verse 9, it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, yet, if, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So Jesus gave up everything to give you salvation. And material items and money and cars and clothes doesn't always mean you're rich. The church of Sardis is poor materially, but rich in the eyes of God. In Revelation 2, 9 it says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So these are people who many would look down on and say they are trashy and poor, but they are actually rich. They may not have much according to the world, but they love Jesus Christ. But then on the other hand, you have Laodicea who is rich and has a lot of material possessions, but they are actually poor in the eyes of God. In Revelation 3.17, it says, Because thou sayest, I am rich. And increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. So the believers at Macedonia needed to be recognized for their giving. And the more money you have, it leads you to more temptations. It can lead you away from the Lord. But Macedonia didn't have much, and they had grace. So compliment others. Go above and beyond for others. In 2 Corinthians 8, 3, For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. So they gave to Paul above and beyond, looking out for others first and not for themselves. This goes contrary to how people are today. In Philippians 2, 21, it says, For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy 3, 2, it says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. So are you thinking about others or are you just thinking about yourself? Now verse 3 and 4, 2 Corinthians 8. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. So they gave so much to Paul, even though they needed it themselves, and Paul said they had to pray to him with much entreaty before he would receive it. Have you ever been trying to give somebody something and they wouldn't take it and then you just have to stick it in their wallet or purse or truck when they're not looking? Or you have to beg them or almost make them feel bad for not taking it? That's what they had to do to Paul. Paul was like, this is a lot of money. Y'all need this. 
but they put others first and, and said, just take the money. Now, verse 5, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. They gave themselves to the Lord first and then gave to the saints. When someone has given themselves to the Lord in their life and in prayer and in reading the Word of God and in hearing the Word of God and preaching, it just makes you a giver. It makes you realize that there are two things in this earthly life that remind you of eternity. One is the words of God and the other is the souls of people. You start feeling burdens for other people. Getting saved will make you care about others. And then having kids will make you care about others. Those are two things that will give you compassion. 2 Corinthians 8, 5 and 6. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. And so much that we desired Titus that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. So he wants the Corinthians to have the same grace of giving as the Macedonians, and maybe Titus can ignite that in him. So he says, In so much that we desire Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Verse 7, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. So the Corinthians were doing well in faith. They weren't doubting and in utterance. They, weren't sounding, they were sounding out the word of the Lord. They had knowledge, so they knew some Bible and diligence. They were applying themselves to what needed to be done. And they were abounding in their love toward the saints. But Paul says, see that ye abound in this grace also. You may have almost everything covered, but there is always room for that improvement on something. See that ye abound in this other thing over here and not just all these things over here. You may be giving and living a good moral life, but how is your prayer life? You may have a good prayer life, but how are you leading your family? Are you spending all your time... <clears throat> <clears throat> keeping up yourself spiritually and forgetting your family? Are you spending all your time keeping up a good testimony at work to the point you forget about a ministry or your Bible reading? So, or do you think about others? Prove your love for others. You can say you care about somebody, but you need to prove it. That's the next thing. Prove your love for others. Second Corinthians 8.8, 8, I speak not by commandment but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. So they aren't to give by commandment, but the giving proves the sincerity of their love, and he wants them to give because of the forwardness of others. That would be the Macedonians. Paul sees the Macedonians' grace in giving, and he wants the Corinthian converts to be doing as well as they are on that issue. So just like the Corinthians were probably doing something the Macedonians were not, they needed to start abounding in this other thing, giving. But the Macedonians had the Corinthians beat on giving at the time. Verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. This is our pattern that we need to follow. We need to follow his steps. Jesus said in John 15, 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life, for his friends, Jesus proved his love for others. Some people say, I just don't believe God loves me. He let this happen and that happen and my dog died and I lost my job. It, I mean, I know bad things happen, but Jesus already proved his love toward you. Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Revelation 1, 5, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Jesus donated his blood to you. You were going to suffer the sick death for your sin, and he donated his blood. He purchased you with his own blood, Acts 20, 28. Romans 15, 3, For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Prove your love to others. Do what you said you would do for others. That's the next thing. Do what you said you would do for others. The Corinthians said they were going to gather up a big offering. Paul wasn't sure if they were sticking to that. You need to stick 
to doing what you said you would do for others, especially if they know you said you would do it. Second Corinthians 8, 10, here and I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. A year ago, they purposed to do it, and they need to go through with what they purposed to do. Verse 11, I therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. They were so ready to do it a year ago, they had a readiness to will, but are they going to perform it? Many times at the beginning of the year, it's January 1st, and you set out to do something. A year later, did you do it? Since they said they were going to do it, they need to go ahead and perform what they were going to do. They had a readiness to will. Now, they need to perform what they purpose to do. This should go for anything. If God puts something on your heart to do it, then go ahead and do it. And don't wait for January 1st. Just start today. Now, verse 12. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. So the giving starts with a willing mind. God, God accepts what you give according to what you have. If you have very little and can only give very little, it's accepted. If you have more, then you end up giving more than the person with very little, and you don't hurt any more than the person who gave very little. Verse 13, For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened. He wasn't trying to ease one and put a burden on the other. He just wanted it to be equal. God gave the Corinthians an abundance so that they could help other Christians in need. And if God never allowed anyone to be in need, then nobody would ever get a chance to give their abundance. Um, 2 Corinthians eight thirteen through 14 For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. The Corinthians' abundance would supply for their want, and their abundance would supply the one of the Corinthians down the road when needed, and then it would be equal. Sometime down the road, the Corinthians would also need help, and God would give them some other group of believers out there in abundance so that they would be able to help the Corinthians. So God wants the saints to take care of each other. God could just let what they needed fall in their lap, but he works through the saints. Verse 15, as it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. As it is written, this was written in the Old Testament. And everyone gets what they needed. Some people need much, but they don't get anything over. He that gathered much had nothing over. Some people need more food because they don't have any food, so they gather much. But those that who gather little because they have more, they don't lack just because they gathered little. They had more to start with, so they only needed to gather little. And he that gathered little had no lack. Paul is using the illustration of Israel gathering the manna in Exodus sixteen eighteen. But what else? Do you think about others? Volunteer for others. In 2 Corinthians eight sixteen and 17, it says, But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. Titus went of his own accord to the Corinthians to help them gather the offering. He went voluntarily and grew to love the Corinthians. When you volunteer, it shows the proof of your love more than it does if someone volunteers you. Verse 18, And we have sent with him the, the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. So Paul sent someone with Titus, a brother, a well-liked guy whose praise is in the gospel, meaning he's been doing a lot for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 19, And not that only. But who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace also, which is administrated by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. Silas seems to be the brother who had his praise in the gospel because verse 19 says, who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace also. And Silas was chosen in Acts 15, 25 through 27. So he seems to be that, that brother. But next, avoid appearing evil to others. Second Corinthians 8.20, avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us. First Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Paul wanted to avoid anyone thinking he was taking the money for himself or that any of them were taking some of the money. So Paul, Titus, and Silas were all three accountable to each other. It would, it would be a ruined testimony if they were pocketing some of the money. 
2 Corinthians 8.21, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Although we shouldn't care what others think to a certain extent, we always need to be mindful of what others think in another sense. We don't want to have the appearance of evil. We want to protect our testimony. The best way to do this is to live honestly in public where everyone sees you and live honestly alone where only God sees you. If you do this, then all the evil spoken of you will be false. Verse 22, And we have sent with him our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, and how much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. So the brother Paul is speaking of had been tried and tested. He had been out through the fire and came out standing. He was proven to be faithful for the task. Can you think of anyone that you would trust with transferring an offering? Could someone trust you to not take the money or supplies for yourself or hiding some of it for hard times? Verse 23, Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you, or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. So the apostle Paul calls Titus a partner and fellow helper. And how many of you are willing just to help someone like Paul? There have been many preachers I've tried to help over the years, whether it be giving them preaching CDs so they could hear preaching or a gift card or just helping them in any way I could. Verse 24, Wherefore show you to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. So Paul wants the Corinthians to show other churches and his buddies the same love that he showed him. This would prove their love and prove that all of Paul's compliments about them was true.